Welcome everyone to Midas Letter Live. Ed Molesky here with Nika, Nika Domi. We're back again, and I'm filling in for James. He's still away, so I'll be here for James a little while. James is obviously getting comfortable with us. Uh, yeah, taking over. <laughs> so what's going on today? We got lots to talk about. We got lots to talk about. Uh, you know, there's uh, interest rate decision tomorrow. We got news with Suzanne Garcia, David Orr of Halo Labs. Jeffrey Fallows of Valens Growwork, plus other things that we're going to discuss. We're mm -hmm. going to look at some charts as, as per usual. We'll talk about some gold. Talk about some gold. Mm -hmm. it, it, there's lots going on. There's always something going on. And, you know, you don't want to be... That's the market. <laughs> looking at one area. Well, when the area's hot, that's what you want to do. But the money's always moving, right? Exactly. And follow the money. I follow the money for sure. Money is an energy, right? So it's yeah. always moving. Yeah, one of the one of the things that that uh, comes up because I always talk about how you know banks want, uh, and and I'm not sure who's right or who's wrong, but let's just say with negative interest rates, you mm -hmm. know, you know, like like a thirteen or fourteen trillion dollars. So so you give a bank your money, and they're going to give you less after the 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 the, the term. Yeah of the debenture or the or the t-bill or whatever uh, you know i mean what what a greater way, easier way to make money you give me <laughs> i'll tell you what you let yeah. me uh, deposit with me a thousand dollars i'm going to give you back 990. but apparently that's bad for the banks because when the banks are low mm -hmm. it's it, it impacts on their ability to generate spreads because yeah. you know they're borrowing at you mean when the interest rates are low when, sorry yeah, yeah. when interest rates are low Anyway, I, I just thought I'd throw up the Royal Bank chart, okay, just before mm -hmm. we go to let's the news. Let's look at that. Yeah, we don't normally do you that. You know, so we don't we talk about out. banks. Mm -hmm. they, these things pay dividends, and if you did nothing, and I've been around this game for 40-odd years, if you just bought bank stocks and reinvested the dividends. Yeah, that's what a friend of mine is doing, just uh, as a yeah. something to always keep in your portfolio, and then he takes the the dividends and reinvests it, so that's a smart thing to do. Yeah, so here's, here's a 20-year chart of the Royal Bank biggest bank in Canada and it's a, it's a very large bank uh, Canada's banks are, are quite quite uh, quite large relatively speaking so so you know it looks like you got and this is 20 years right that's a, that's a trend that's that's moving from bottom left to top right I suspect most of the banks are in Canada are moving in that direction. And you know, when, when, the, when problems happened back in 2008, 9, 10, when the world mm -hmm. blinked and yeah. Bear Stearns went under and there, other, you know, there was problems, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Warren Buffett had to bail or lent $5 billion to Goldman Sachs. Our banks held up very, very really? well. They, they got pounded like everything did, but not to the point where it looked like so you that's mean Canadian a, banks. The Canadian banks yeah. mm -hmm. were some of the best acting banks in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't have very many of them. We don't. We don't have, no, though it's it's a bit mm -hmm. of an uh, 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 not a monopoly, but uh, it's a tighter cl structure. closer to mm -hmm. oligopoly. Maybe I, I, I'm not sure what the what kind <laughs> of poly it is, but uh, it's 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 not it, it's the a, monopoly game. <laughs> it's a, it's a it, yeah. And I, look. Rates are gonna, they're gonna make a decision tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. Look at it, we, we're gonna talk about some gold. But first, we're gonna hear from Suzanne Garcia, and she's gonna give us the news rundown. And here's what's making cannabis headlines today. Seoul Global Investments released its financial results for the year ending March 31st, 2019. Net income was $95 million, or $2.30 per share fully diluted. Included in net income was a gain on sale of LATAM holdings of $204.8 million. Cash and short-term investments were $182.4 million. 
National Access Cannabis announced its financial results for the third quarter ending May 31st, 2019. Net loss was $4.8 million, or $0.02 cents per share. Revenue was $17 million. Gross profits was $5.5 million at 33% margin. Cash and cash equivalents were $10.7 million. Rapid Dose Therapeutics reported its financial results for the first quarter of fiscal 2020, which ended on May 31st, 2019. Net loss was $3.1 million, or $0.04 cents per share. Cash and short-term investments were $2 million. Body and Mind has qualified to trade on the OTCQB venture market. BAM begins trading today on the OTCQB under the symbol BMMJ. Charlotte's Web Holdings reported an extension of its research initiative with the Center for Discovery in New York State to further develop hemp genetics for optimal growing in the region. The project has been helping Charlotte's Web's expansion within the Eastern Appalachian region by determining which hemp varieties grow the best under the region, microclimates, and local terrain. Delta 9 Cannabis has retained PI Financial to provide market-making services in accordance with TSX Venture Exchange policies. PI will trade the securities of the company for the purpose of maintaining an orderly market. Emerald Health Therapeutics has appointed Raz Bandali as Chief Executive Officer. Mr. Bandali most recently served as President of Early Phase Clinical Services for Sinolis Health, an international clinical research organization. Vivo Cannabis has received approval from Health Canada to commence extraction operations using its on-site supercritical CO2 extraction system. Upon receipt of EU GMP certification for its Napanine facility, the company is expected to be able to ship extracted cannabis products to Europe for medical purposes in addition to selling domestically. And that's your news for today. For all of the news moving weed stocks every day, visit Cannabis Daily on MidasLayer.com. Coming up next, we have an interview with David Orr, who's the Chief Revenue Officer of Halo Labs. Halo Labs is a cannabis extraction company that develops and manufactures quality cannabis oils and concentrates. Founded in Oregon in 2016, Halo has expertise in all major cannabis manufacturing processes. The company is currently expanding its operations with new facilities in Nevada and California. With a consumer-centric focus, Halo will continue to market innovative branded and private label products across multiple product categories. Halo trades on the NEO Exchange under the ticker H-A-L-O. David Orr joins me now. He's the Chief Revenue Officer at Halo Labs. David, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, David. So as the Chief Revenue Officer, your ass is online every day, obviously. Yes. Yes, in some ways. Yeah. yeah and, some days uh, more than others. Yeah. So uh, we've, we're familiar with the product line of Halo Labs. Mm -hmm. I'm more interested in the strategic direction. Like what made you come up with a thing like a dab tab that is something that I've never seen anywhere. Nobody else has them. I'm assuming there's some IP around that. Yes, there is, definitely. Uh, you know, a great question. And we're really looking at dab tabs with the same level of excitement and differentiation. You know, I, th I think, and I think most would admit, the industry in and of itself is, like most, somewhat me too. So mm -hmm. there's a tremendous amount of competition, a tremendous amount of brands and product offerings that basically are the same thing. Um, we look at dab tabs as a really true breakthrough innovation in the cannabis industry. Yeah. And it's a ceramic-based tablet that you can infuse uh, with microdosing kind of mindset uh, and allow it to be equidosed uh, across any number of potential fills. You can fill it with live resin, shatter, distillate, et cetera. So CBD, THC. Right. So as we think about the opportunities for the product, we really do see it as something that not only from an innovation and news perspective is great, but also something that actually delivers uh, different benefits to consumers. Yeah, so the precise dose concept is something that I think is part of what's alienating a whole potential audience for cannabis in that if you smoke dried flour, you don't know how much you're inhaling. You don't know how, you don't know exactly what you're getting. When you consume an edible, you don't know exactly how much you're eating or when it's going to hit you or how long it's going to last. Um, so precision dosing, is that targeting an older, more mature audience? I'd actually say it's 
targeting a broad audience, not necessarily older and mature. I think as the market matures, I think now as cannabis becomes hopefully, you know, a much more kind of common, uh, um, uh, enjoyable experience across consumers, I think you're going to see people that are going to, not only from an education perspective, but also just from a, per a perspective of having control, mm -hmm. they're going to want that. So again, we, th we think about how the category, you asked me about strategy, I think we, we're constantly thinking about how the industry is going to evolve, and I think being able to have measured doses is something that consumers are going to be looking for across the board. Um, this product is one of the first. Uh, I would assume that there'll be, there'll be more downstream. Yeah, you bet. Uh, we heard from uh, CEO Kieran Sidhu earlier, and uh, he sort of indicated that the company is on track for fantastic revenue this year. <laughs> um, how do you transplant this success story onto the other states as they become legal? Again, you know, and, and yeah, we are optimistic about what we'll be able to do here, and Karen particularly, um, mm -hmm. which hence, you know, you, you, I laughed because you talked about, you know, where I fall, and yeah, that's the kind of pressure that we're self-imposing a little bit because we really are optimistic about what we can do. With that said, I think our kind of footprint really is twofold, and I'm sure Karen, Karen talked about this. You know, we offer branded products, which you see an example of here, and also white label. Mm -hmm. uh, and as we look to expand, not only in the states that we're in, but in other states, it really is to focus on both of those potential revenue streams and really think about how we optimize them. Mm -hmm. Branded products will be a, a big part of it, but also the opportunity to capitalize on our expertise in cannabis extraction and provide quality white label products for others, we also th see as a really big revenue stream for us. Okay, so in terms of... Um owning additional states and territories, getting your products into other states. Is it Halo's sort of strategic direction to wait for federal deprohibition, or are you planning to sort of incrementally establish a presence in each of the states as it's possible? I'd say it's more the latter, for sure. I think the challenge for us, and probably like many others, is just to be as prudent and disciplined as you can. We want to go in and be able to have the same traction in the markets that we've had in the states that we're in, so if, if three states opened up you know, next week, I don't think we'd be running over ourselves to try to get in all three. I think we'd look at each state, see which ones presented the best opportunities for us, see what the regulatory environment would be in each state, see which ones would allow us to op optimize our kind of footprint, if you will, in those states, and we'd probably approach it that way as opposed to just chasing states as they open. Yeah, you bet. So um, you're obviously got your eyes on Europe, as mm -hmm. is evidenced by your Lesotho operations, is the plan to offer, because Europe's primarily medical at this plant, is the, is the plan to be able to ship product into the European market as a medical product? Yes, I think we're looking at both. You know, I, I, the thing that's exciting and, and challenging at the same time is, is the speed at which the market is evolving. So I think you know, Europe, much like many places in the U.S., started as medical. The thought with that, that those markets would continue to evolve. I think for us right now, the footprint is to get in to Europe the way we can, which would be with the medical footprint, but then be prepared to be able to expand as that market potentially evolves. Mm -hmm. I think not much different here. Um, you know, our product lineup currently is primarily THC, but we're actively exploring CBD lineups because they're going to be market opportunities for both. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, that market might be more medical, but I think it's going to be an evolution. Yeah, you bet. Um, Europe is, uh, is slower moving than the rest of the world. What about Latin America? I'd say we're, we're, we see all the markets as potential opportunities, right? And I think Latin America is one that we'd be eager and anxious in. There's a couple places specifically we've talked about uh, exploring, uh, and I think that's what we will continue to do. You know, Kieran is very um, forward-thinking in how he's thinking about approaching different markets as they open, so I'd say there's probably not a market we're not thinking about. Mm -hmm. Again, I think the challenge for us is try to be as pragmatic as possible to ensure that when we go into the markets, we can have the, the same level of success that we've had thus far. Right. Uh, so do you think that there's a likelihood that countries who ultimately gravitate towards legalization are going to try to protect the economic opportunity inherent in legalization for national companies at the expense of international companies who would be importers into those countries? I, I don't know. I, I think my answer would be largely subjective. I, I think I would agree with you. Yes, I think there will be some of that. I think as it becomes more 
political, as it gets more ingrained into the revenue streams and everybody's thinking about how that would play out, I think you are going to have, just like in every other kind of industry, some lobbying, some kind of elbowing to try to see who could be first in line. Mm -hmm. As we would say, it would lend itself to some of the bigger, larger nationals, sure. maybe shots at opportunities that others might not. Right. Uh, the landscape of pure extractors mm -hmm. is pretty limited globally and and really it's it's I mean you can't really argue with the idea that the pure extractors who have evolved and succeeded as pure extractors are you know very strong financially in mm -hmm. terms of cost of capital in terms of generating investor interest and halo at this point, I would categorize as probably one of the least expensive among all of, of the pure extractors. Mm -hmm. And so is it safe to, for me to conclude as an investor without being too patronizing <laughs> that this is evidently an early stage situation that might actually be uh, undervalued? Absolutely. I think that's more than fair, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think it's, it's a stretch at all. I right. mean, if you look at uh, our financials, if you look at where we are, you look at what we're doing, um, I think any kind of look at that would say undervalued. Mm -hmm. um, but financials aside, I think what we continue to really reinforce for us is the expertise and knowledge that we've built up in extraction. And I think as, as again, as the industry evolves, those that have proven expertise, understanding, and knowledge, whether it be in, in cultivation, extraction, candidly the retail space, I think all of those folks are going to be the ones that are the strongest in position for the most success, whether that be financially, stock-wise, or other. Or other. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's a risk that price uh, war, uh, price war evolves from uh, commodification of the underlying feedstock, cannabis itself, yes. by as a result of the fact that it's easy to grow and all countries are rushing towards growing it? How soon till we're oversaturated? The price of of cannabis collapses to the point where it makes no financial sense to fill these devices. Hopefully that, that's a long way, but I do think there are real economic kind of factors that are in play. And I think, candidly, in the U.S. we've seen, whether it be in states like Colorado or Oregon, some of those dynamics that you, you've just mentioned. And I think there's going to be a number of things. I, I think the market is going to equalize the supply-demand equation. I think some of the regulation is, is going to come in. I think, candidly, the market is probably going to force some people out that don't have the resources, expertise, depth of knowledge to really survive, uh, I think it will get to a point of survival. And then I think once you get past that, you will start to see, like in any other industry, um, the market itself start to really stabilize what it'll be. The commodity aspect is something that's going to always exist. Um, it is in many ways a, commodit a commoditizable product. Mm -hmm. So I think, again, it's going to be a shorter line of people that are able to, to really get in and stay in, but I do think that there will be opportunities for those that, that are able to stay to absolutely create models that make sense financially. You bet. All right, David, let's leave it there for now. We'll come back to you soon. Thanks for joining me today. Sounds great. Thanks a bunch. Let's talk about Aurora. Recently, your financials, you mm -hmm. more or less delivered Here are the headlines moving markets today. Yeah, if you're lucky to buy it uh, three days ago at 37 cents. And I you think it has a lot to do with uh, some of these smaller names so giving really Recreational cannabis is here. It's yeah. quite dry. So I'm gonna eliminate the stocky bits. So, well, Nika, <laughs> how you doing? You look great today, by the oh, way. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, trying for the Midas letter, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. So what's going on with gold lately? I hear a lot. Yeah, of well, talk you know, about you know, gold. you know, you know there was a guy. More. I, I got up this morning really early to catch an early train, and mm -hmm. we had a derailment oh, around uh, the Paris area. You know, there's a Paris in Ontario. Yes, there is. Paris, yeah, Ontario. Paris, Ontario. Yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, derailed. And what was going to take me two fi two hours fifteen or two twenty took five twenty. Oh man! But they gave us a bottle of water and a couple of. Oh, I thought you were going to say a bottle of wine. Bottle of wine. <laughs> I, oh, oh. That's what they should have given. Oh, for okay. five hours on the train. Yeah, so, so you know, go, so there's a guy on TV this morning. I, I got mm. on the tr treadmill, did my workout, Ooh, and they nice. asked him about so gold. You're doing better than me. <laughs> Listen, you got to do something because I'll tell you, Father Time yeah. 
takes over. Yeah. Father you know time. What? Actually, we've done research at my university um, yeah. about exercise and stress, and our research found that exercise is an amazing thing to do when you are stressed because it really restores your body and your mind to the levels that you need it to be to healthy levels, right? Yeah, no, it's it's got to be good. Mm -hmm. It's got to be good. It has to if be you good. don't use it, you will lose mm -hmm. it. Anyway, so, so gold. the gentleman, the yeah. gentleman's, you know, he, you know, the, you can't print gold, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, all fiat currencies, they just can, you know, put some more gasoline in there, <laughs> oil it up, and then put it on high. And here comes and the print, paper. Print. <laughs> you can't print gold. You mm -hmm. know, the alchemists tried to convert it from Base other metals to gold. Yeah, yeah. no, no, it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, and gold, coal, gold is caught a bid. Gold is, I think it got down about 12. We're going to put up a chart right now. This is the ETF, and it tracks gold. Uh, it tracks gold almost, yeah, I, I, almost I perfectly. Some, some of my friends in the group chats are talking about gold. And okay, this is the Spider Gold Trust. And if you look, uh, we, well, we're going to do a couple charts, but I think this is an important topic because if gold does go on a run, mm -hmm. A lot, these junior stocks, which are as cheap as borscht, mm -hmm. okay, and you know all about borscht. <laughs> yeah. So do I. <laughs> Polux here. We're both Polish, by the yeah, way, both, so, and yeah. it's a coincidence yeah. completely. <laughs> <laughs> Quits well. Yeah. You got to be from somewhere, That's right? How, yeah. <laughs> I don't have a, a sort of a, a smooth-sounding name like you do, but. That's another thing. But ski is a good Polish oh, name, my, isn't it? No, listen, my last. So anyway, uh, cutting Here we go. you off. We're, we're, okay. we're always go bouncing back yeah. and forth. Here we go. We're going to talk about my actual my name is Dominika, but Nika Domi is my nickname that I've been using for many yeah, years. Yeah, you've taken the last part of your yeah. name, put it on the front. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> a little like a little. Uh, so tell me about the gentleman so, you're talking so, about. So 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 look so so we got a chart up here right now, mm -hmm. a one year chart of gold. Okay, and it's it's. It's it's what you like to see. You see lower left mm -hmm. to top right. In other words, you want that kind of a trend, and it's almost. So let, let's just uh, let's just get to let's get busy. Let's get busy. Uh, look at this. There's the low, almost a year ago, and here's the high, almost a year later. And so this is moved from here to here. Uh, I'm just gonna try to look something's changed because th th you know and I think when it broke here there's a level here when it broke that level yeah that, they, they put on a pretty big gap and a lot of the technical guys are saying that was a breakout move because this I think and, I, and I'll show it here let me see here let me just I want to show this because this is this is probably as significant so now we're looking at it over 10 years, okay? So that's a 10-year chart. Gold peaked here in 2011, okay? And look at that run. Look at that, that's, that's exponential. Oh, wow. Okay? That was from, you know, basically 2009 to 2011. Those two years, it went nuts. Then we, we got to have a correction. It broke down here. A lot of the, the big smart guys would have said, get out of gold here, and that's what you should have done. But then look, for five, six years, Right? Look at that base. Yeah. Right? And it looks like it was breaking down, but then it, it back in the early, I think this is early 2015, mm -hmm. right here, right? It changed directions. That, there's a direction there, and it changed. And since then, it's been putting in time. Mm -hmm. that, that's my humble view. And, and gold now, if you I'll clear this up a bit, Gold now is up in up in this. Up in, you can watch it up there too, by the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That is now higher than that. That move, see how it's up above. Mm-hmm. So so what does that tell you? Well, it's broken out of a pattern yeah. that stood around for five six years. The longer a pattern is in place, when it finally does get broken, pay attention. Yeah. If it's only a two-day trend and it breaks, well, it wasn't really a trend. And it's always good to check on gold, right? Because you want to know what's going on. We have to if check. If you're from, many especially from areas. your the Czech Republic, to check on gold. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Check on gold. So, 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 gold's starting to catch a bit, and maybe that's because it looks like mm -hmm. in the world, 
with all the printing of this money, yeah. there's so much money, interest rates can't go up. Yeah. And and I don't know if that's the reason, but I think $14 trillion or $15 trillion now is earning negative interest rates. Mm -hmm. Well, that's no fun. You go to the bank, you give them your money, they give you back less. Jesus. <laughs> anyway. Isn't that a deal? So, so what, you know, and, and tomorrow, some... okay, you know, let's tie it into what the Fed's going to do tomorrow. Right. They're going to yes. come out with their decision. And, and uh, you know, the, the, the talk is, like, the, you know, it doesn't look like there's any real strength in the world for rates to go up. Mm-hmm. So does that they're mean they're saying that they're the they're pretty sure global they're gonna, economies are slowing? Well, yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. And then there's the trade war on top of it, mm -hmm. which but is. But then we have markets rallying. Market climbs a wall of worry. <laughs> we learned that two days ago. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. It, it, look at it, if it was simple. If it was one and one's equal to two, and yeah. two and one's equal to three, you know, we wouldn't have to Not in watch the stock it. Market. No one would watch us. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, what are some of the um, companies in gold? Like, what are the some of the? Well, you know, I just I just noticed. Some of the good ones. I just noticed. Uh, Detour Gold. Mm -hmm. Okay, Detour Gold is a Canadian producer, Ontario. I think they've got pretty good deposit. You know, I don't know. Like, it's been a while since I've really looked at them, but let's take a look. Let's take a look, because because I was surprised when I said, "How does this done?" Okay. Let's look. Let's take a look. Detour Gold, which is a well-respected company, they found a they put a mine into production, and it's not easy to put a mine into production, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. The no. costs are oh, staggering. Yeah. Yeah. So just let's just look at this. I'm going to put up a one-year chart just to show you why people are starting to get excited about gold. If you put up a one-year, there. Look at this. Now, how would you like to? You know, you, 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 you decided you were going to buy a gold stock, so you buy Detour, right? You buy it in here seven, eight months ago, nine months ago, and then it starts to move. Then it co consolidates a bit, and then, but look at this run. Look at this. Wow. This, this is like, this is That's pure so nirvana. Awesome. This is... This is what you want, and this is going on. From 12 to 20. 12 to 20 in what, how long? Uh, two months. Three months. Okay, so there, there's one example, but let's look at Kirkland Lake. Mm -hmm. Kirkland Lake is, uh, you know, you're going to be, uh, I think you're going to be uh, surprised or wowed. Let's see it. Okay, so this is the, the chart of Kirkland Lake. I'm going to put up a two-year chart. A three-year chart. Let's put up a three-year chart. So from three years, it's gone. Here it is. It's six bucks. And again, the small ones haven't started yet. And remember, we we're talking about how cheap they are. But look at this: from six to sixty. Mm -hmm. Six to sixty. Mm -hmm. wow. Now you know. The, the, I think it's it's Eric Sprott, who's uh, legendary in the Toronto area. Uh, Eric Sprott is uh, considered one of the, the, the smartest minds. Big investor. He's, he's, he owns, I, 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 I don't want to say that, but I think because he's an insider, it's public knowledge, but it's around 20 million shares. Mm -hmm. Well, wow. you do, do the math, yeah. 20 million at, yeah. at, at 60 bucks is a billion two, last time I checked. Not a million it's two. not looking bad at billion all, two. really, hey? And a million is a mm -hmm. thousand billion. So, you know, there's some serious money involved in this, and you can't print this stuff. Like, yes. But, well, but look at look how yeah, look I love it, gold myself for well you like you know, to wear for it. other purposes yeah, yeah. Look, at, look, look at look at it's almost a perfect look at this unbelievable so there's action out there uh, sometimes if you get too caught up in a in a in an area uh, and you don't look around and, and you know you gotta it's like you it's have like, to look at everything a, ca exactly. a cast is up again it was mm -hmm. 275 for you could have bought it thursday so a cast night is not a gold play but no 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 I, but we i'm just saying there's about. other yeah and not too many people have really paid attention to it well, you know so the, the people that have paid attention to it mm -hmm. have paid attention to it exactly the, the, it's always about the people that are in the the wrong areas and sometimes it's better to get out of them mm -hmm. So we had a little talk about gold. Yeah. And by the way, if rates drop tomorrow, but it's already built in, so maybe gold's already reflected it, that's the part, that's the tricky part. It could have, right? It could have priced in. Well, it's already moved up. Like, yeah. let's say gold was tanking, and everybody says, don't buy gold, don't buy gold. And all of a sudden, the Fed says, we're going to cut rates 
dramatically because things are slowing down, gold will turn around and skyrocket. Yeah. It's good to keep some around, though, just to kind of have that bit of a diversity in your portfolio, right? You know, uh, portfolio managers, strict portfolio managers say there's probably room for 5 to 15% of your money mm -hmm. in bullion as a hedge. Yeah. Because when things are good, gold doesn't use you that bad. But when things start to get a little shaky, yeah. then, then th there's a move to gold. Yeah, exactly. A anyway, you know... Um, we were talking earlier about about uh, uh, revenues and sales mm -hmm. and income and you know the, 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 like when you study accounting, you know you get into a, a, a course like theoretical accounting and they start explaining what all this is what about. What all the different terms are. And, and, and it's not so much numbers. Them. This is all theory, and you have to yeah. try to understand like what what are they talking about like with income, revenue generation, and you know they talk about amortization and intercompany transactions and there's it, it's a very difficult course anyway a lot of times I hear people say oh they, they did 50 million revenue and a lot of people think that's what they made that's, yes yeah. but revenue generally is the the sales number right and you have to back off everything from that to come you have up to with subtract the other things right? yeah and there's 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 fixed there's there's direct costs costs related to the production of the marijuana that's sold mm -hmm. and there's also the overhead overhead is non-related but yeah. they still have to, they still have to have an office they still have to have a grow operation yeah, we really have to pay attention to the terms and if there is ever a term that you don't exactly understand look it up do yeah. some research yeah and, or, and or and talk then, to an accountant mm -hmm. accountants generally have pretty good knowledge of of terms that the 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 uh, I, I don't want to say novice investors, but it's it, you know, there's terms that are lots they, terms. they mean like working mm -hmm. capital has a specific meaning. There's a definition. Exactly. Current assets, violence, current liabilities, right? So we have to get a little bit more schooled, and we can't just think that if, we you know um, we know everything yeah. and, and uh, get a little bit deeper into this stuff because if you're putting your money in there, you really have to know what you're doing, especially it, these days when. You know, the, the, the one thing that I would say is that just about everybody should take a basic accounting course. Mm -hmm. uh, just to become familiar with terms like, you know, earnings and, and earnings per share yeah. and net income and yeah. cash flow and, and exactly. you know. I'm it, sure there is free stuff, free courses online. There's oh, yeah. information on YouTube. Sure. You could, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, and and because you know the, what, what, why I want to talk about this is because there's only a few companies in the marijuana space that are making money that are profitable, right? There's yeah. only a few. We were just looking earlier at the new cannabis ventures, right? So from the Canadian list, it appears that we see only Organigram. That uh, let me just. I'm gonna I'm gonna you, put up the chart, look, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just looking for my own. No, no, no for sure, for sure. Uh, but but, o OGI. O OGI is um, appearing to be at the top of the list. Okay, well, well, here is a marijuana company that has what I would call a pretty good looking chart because I like to, I like to see that bias of lower a left steady to up. top right. Mm -hmm. When you when it's the other way around, top left to lower right yes <laughs> you know it's like you don't have a smile you, <laughs> <laughs> you know but right, this goes right. oh, oh you know it so let's go smoke some pot sing, yeah. makes you want to <laughs> sing right sing and, and if you sing too much you go to sing sing yeah <laughs> okay so so organogram now the the big one i guess in the states and in the states on top of is, that is list it, here is true leave which uh is led by a lady so I'm uh, I'm kind of you're kind happy of bi you're biased one, yeah. you're biased <laughs> yeah and the ticker there she's doing a great job is T R U L T R U L yeah they are trading on the C S E C N X let's see C if I put C S E mm -hmm. in they say no oh okay, okay but, for but, your purpose yeah, yeah, yeah. okay so let's take a look here we got a I don't think this has been public very long so this says that their last quarterly sales in U S dollars were forty four million quarterly sales yeah over. Well, there you go. So here's a company, the Tree Leave. Now, Tree Leave doesn't seem to have that the organogram bias mm -hmm. to the extent, but it's still 
You know what it was? They had their share unlock coming up in um, right in, in this month in July, but then they postponed it. I don't remember what date exactly. So many people were waiting until I think it was July 25th when it was supposed to unlock. So I was actually myself also watching this stock because I do watch this stock and. I was waiting for the share unlock to happen, but they postponed it, so uh, it didn't happen. So uh, the stock kind of started going up after that, but now I see it's coming back down below that. Uh, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, well, you know, just a couple of comments. I mean, I, I can't believe this uh, this debut here back in October. Look at this. This thing was around uh, yeah, this they started nine, trading, nine and a half bucks. In, mm -hmm. And then one, two, three, like four, five, six days, mm -hmm. it hit twenty three dollars. Yeah. And then and then it but but it was almost a full turn. Look at I remember look at, watching look at their this. IPO. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> look at this. Yeah. Like yeah. What are we what are we, are we in a playground on a seesaw or like what's going on here? And then bright look at this. This it's is that M shape that it's well, it, look at we got a, we got a nice good. W now here. Like a W. Mm -hmm. Like for a win. But then, you know, it and it's gonna be Look, I don't know uh, uh, all the all the like shares outstanding, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. But but you say they did about forty four million in the last quarter, yeah, revenue, yeah. Mm -hmm. and they're generating some cash. Yeah, they're the Florida. They're in Florida, so one they're right. the biggest player in Florida. It, 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 you know what? Look, this thing is volatile. Uh, yeah, it well, looks can, it looks it, like you could. It, and oh, I very remember tradable. I was trading tradable. them last uh, last fall, and I remember they were always going head to head with Charlotte's Web last fall, like last year. And then this year they kind of separated away. So I remember watching them and watching Charlotte's Web going kind sure. of together last year. You know, year. you know what? It, 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 if you if you if you move to a hot area, mm -hmm. some and you, because it's hot, you, sh you got to be careful that you're not moving in too late, mm -hmm. because. A lot of this stuff happens real early, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway. Well, they're kind of back to uh, what I used to trade them last year. So they, they've made all that $20 and then came yeah. back down. And yeah, yeah. now it's been a little bit uh, of a Yeah, I wish I could uh, predict it a little mm -hmm. bit better. But anyway, <laughs> okay. So James actually caught up with Jeffrey Follows, who is the president of Valens Grow Works. And here's what they had to say. Valens Grow Works Corp is a multi-licensed, vertically integrated cannabis company focused on being the partner of choice for leading Canadian and international cannabis brands. Valens is the largest third-party extraction company in Canada with an annual capacity of 425,000 kilograms of dried cannabis and hemp biomass at their purpose-built facility in Kelowna, British Columbia. Valens Grow Works trades on the TSX Venture under the symbol VGW. I'm joined now by Jeffrey Fallows. He's the president of Valens Grow Works Corp, trading on the TSX Venture under the symbol VGW. Jeffrey, welcome. Thanks for having me. Tell me about all that is happening in Valens Grow recently. We just announced uh, our first or our second quarter, um, 2019, uh, and had some pretty strong results coming out of there. Process a lot of volumes mm -hmm. and really starting to hit up our ramp in terms of, uh, of both revenue and EBITDA. Um, so really starting to hit our stride and, and looking forward to things coming in the next couple quarters. Yeah, wow, that's uh, quite an increase. Uh, up 296% in the first quarter over last year's first quarter. Um, what's the... Uh, uh, what's the what's the annual run rate looking like for exit 2019? Uh, so we're, we're seeing a, a, a pretty steady increase in volumes uh, as the year goes on. Mm -hmm. uh, we anticipate being pretty close to our full capacity by the end of the year okay. uh, in terms of volumes through. Uh, right now we're really working with our partners and ensuring, you know, there's a lot of uh, process that goes in with the scale up, both on their side and our side, making sure volumes come in when they're supposed to come in and go right. out when they're supposed to go out. So making great progress on that and every day it's getting better, as you can see with the quarter over quarter volume increase. You bet. So uh, I recall that Balance Grow Works was making 
making sequential announcements that you were extracting for this large scale LP, that large scale LP, but you also had some of your own cultivation. Is that still the mix? Uh, so we are not doing any cultivation. Oh, okay. uh, we are focused uh, exclusively on providing extraction services to our clients. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and as we've also announced, we're now moving from straight base extraction where we provide either crude or distillate oils to our to our customers. We're also now moving to phase two in the market, which is, uh, you know, with vape pens, soft gels, top topicals, all those kind of sort of next generation products that are going to hit the shelves uh, later this year. Oh, okay. So you're doing all of the products. Do you have a focus? Do you have a, a product line into the medical world as well? Uh, yeah, we are, uh, whether it's recreational or medical, we're, uh, we're agnostic as to which market it goes into. Okay. We're about providing good quality products to our, to sure. our customers. So does that mean you're going to source your feedstock uh, biomass all the time from LPs? Uh, yep, so majority of our volumes right now are processed through toll, which means that they remain the property of the LPs. Mm -hmm. um, we just send, we send back the oil to them. But as we're moving more towards the white label and depending on what our clients are looking for, in some instances we may be sourcing product for them, in other instances we may be processing their own product and then just moving it farther down the value chain to, as I say, things like vape pens and soft gels, et cetera. Sure. You're approaching capacity. Does that mean you're going to increase capacity? So we just announced a, a large scale capacity uh, increase to 425,000 kilograms per year, wow. making us the largest extraction, third party extraction uh, facility in Canada. Hmm. Uh, we also announced that uh, we started construction on our adjoining facility next door, which will take our capacity up to 1 million kilograms per year. Hmm. Uh, but it, uh, you know, more important than the mass volume of it is obviously the, the margin and the return we're getting on each of those, uh, each of those uh, kilograms that we are processing. And we feel pretty good about uh, what we're seeing so far coming out of there. Sure. So as we're ramping, I think you'll see that 425,000 thousand um, number will be st will be starting to hit that on a run rate as we roll through the end of the year right. and then into the 2020 we really expect those that larger scale to come online and, and to be requiring those volumes sure the uh, business model of extractors seems to generate a lot of free cash flow as evidenced by metafarm uh, and others and certainly balance grow is starting to exhibit that same pattern what is it about the extraction business model that makes it so uh, robust when it comes to generating cash. Well, I think, you know, first and foremost, it's required for the next generation product. So you have to extract out the cannabinoids in order to put them into those other products. So mm -hmm. we're a vital, vital part of the value chain right, right now. And secondly, especially when it comes to the balance sense, we offer a full suite of services. And so, you know, if you're doing a CO2 extraction or you're doing an ethanol extraction or even a hydrocarbon extraction, where we're the only one in Canada capable of doing that, you know, providing these services and providing the quality product we provide are affording us some, some strong margins right now. Wow, that's fantastic. And what sort of exposure do you have to the global marketplace, Europe, Latin America, United States? So we have a number of conversations going across the globe, quite frankly, and that's part of my job and why I joined the team is to help them with this international expansion plan. Mm -hmm. And my focus right now is really understanding everything that's in our pipeline and understanding if we're going to be investing a dollar of shareholders' money, where's the best return back for us? So that may be, you know, maybe in a joint venture context, it may be an acquisition context, it may be just a, a Greenfield startup by ourselves, mm -hmm. uh, but we're we're going through all that exercise right now and, and choosing the rest to deploy share other money. Sure. What product type is the most popular? Is the biggest seller for Balance Grow? Uh, so I'd say uh, right now it's it's uh, it's uh, oil. Obviously, it's either crude or distillate oil. Uh, as we move into 2020, we expect to be a large percentage coming from vapes in, in the vape category and those sort of next generation products. And certainly on an international scale, which is largely a medical market, there's not many recreational markets that are uh, that you can sell into. You know, so those would be more medical based, which would be tinctures and those sorts of things as you're going internationally. Well, wow, cool. Okay, well that's great uh, update, Jeffrey. We'll leave it there for now and come back to you soon. Thanks very much for joining me today. Well, thanks for having me. And we're done. Uh, that's really cool. I, uh Well, we're back. We're back. And I hear that James is going to be tuning G in.
Well, <laughs> we're back. Back again. James is, uh, yeah, James is going to, I think he's uh, attempting to. Technical, technical. We're having technical, te technical difficulties. That's okay. That's a we, live we, show, right? Yeah, that, that's, yeah. All right, all right. So, look, well, you know what? We're at the getting towards the end of the end of the of the hour, and so why don't we look at look at some charts? I I've I've identified uh, a number of companies we haven't looked at in a while. We got some issues. I I okay. There, he's okay. You know what? Through the magic of television. He's back. We have James. Now James is back. Hi James. Nice to see you. How Hi are guys. You? Like the shirt. Thank very, you. It's very a, it's Arizona. From a Toronto designer. From what kind of designer? Toronto designer. I okay. can't see the uh, tag. Can you see it? Yeah. Well, you know what? We can't either. <laughs> hey, that's enough. Oh, that's a call. I can't remember. Anyways, yeah, it's a Toronto designer. Wow. I'll try to get in the sun for you. How, so how about like? that cannabis market today? Well, we got we got some we got some good ones. There's some there's some interesting looking charts or uh, candles, yeah. I should say. I think we might be trying to find a bit of a bottom here. I, I think we are. Yeah. Because of some of the pessimism. You see the uh, you see the financials from Soul Global Investments. That's the one I meant to. That's mention. that S O L. Soul. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know what? I, I looked that up, and I, I see this. They made ninety-five million bucks, but it looks like most of it was from a sale of something, right? Yeah, well, that's their business model. They're a uh, they're an investment platform. Andy DiFrancesco is the chief investment officer, and uh, the business is essentially make investments into other cannabis operators, and then sell them to somebody else for a uh, considerable markup. Mm -hmm. so they it's have the old the buy low, sell up, high model. So if they if they can do a uh, sale like this every every quarter or every year, I mean, it's going to be a winner. Well, no kidding. I I was I looked at those numbers and I thought, I wonder where this thing trades. I I didn't look up how many shares are outstanding, but I, I'm going to do that. I'm going to take a, a hard look at this mm -hmm. because uh, it, it's bounced off. Uh, it's come off of like it's been steadily uh, dropping. If I had the right chart up, here I'll put it up right now. Rising in the last session. It uh, got to down to a low of buck uh, sixty six, and as of this moment, it's trading at a buck ninety four, up six cents on uh, one hundred fifteen thousand shares. Yeah, back back to this uh, moving average line. I, I got the chart up there, but th this thing, you know, I mean, look, if they keep making money like this, you're right. This this becomes uh, it becomes simple because yeah. ultimately it's about making money, right? <laughs> Buy low, sell high. Buy. Yeah. <laughs> if they don't go up, don't buy them. Yeah, but uh, the other cannabis index is doing uh, interesting things too. The large cap down one point three eight percent to eighty seven fifty. That's still in uh, quite a steep little decline. I mean, that yeah. doesn't look like any sign of ending. Chronos. I, I was looking at the chart, and, and it looks like um, I don't know if you want to. Put, we can put that up now. We can put it up later. I don't know what what uh, what your plan is, but. The 50-day moving average looks like it's about to meet the 200-day moving average, and if it breaks through it, I think that's what they refer to as a a, a golden cross, uh, mm. or, or or some kind of cross. I mean, maybe if it's not in the gold sector, it's <laughs> it's another kind of cross. But if, Green if, cross. It, if it if it if it breaks through on the upside, it's yeah. very bullish. Con on the other hand, if it breaks through down. And uh, it, that looks like, like, it, the, 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 like Kronos is, is, is at about as low as it's been in a while. As we, yeah, and, and uh, here we are. Like if you look, uh, well, down from a 52 week high of $32 a share to 18 and change today. I mean, uh, yeah, 18, it's heading 30, towards 30. a 50% loss in value. This, this candle today's, only, go ahead. It's only demonstrate the idea that, uh, these large corporate investors who come in and, and then take a passive sort of position, and they none of their capital gets deployed in a way that seems to demonstrate that there's going to be a boost in share price for the investee, 
the uh, the retail market loses interest. These companies got to do something with that money. They got to put it out right. there. Get it, in the, they get gotta, it in the marketplace. They got to hire. They got to hire Midas letter. Yeah. Hire yeah I haven't seen Kronos do too much. We don't. We don't get hired, Ed. We appoint clients. I don't know if you noticed that. Yeah. Well, uh, you know what? I knew as soon as I said it, I'd made a mistake. <laughs> we choose them. They don't choose us. Yeah, and and we, weeds under forty four. Uh, yeah. You see the well, front page. You, did you see the front page of the Globe? Well, you probably didn't see the front page of the Globe today, based on where you are. I don't really read the Globe now. Anyway, it made a comment that there was some insider selling uh, uh, and trust when they when they, when trust found out that Health Canada knew that they had some rooms that they shouldn't. You know, that's on the that's plastered on the front page. So, well, that's uh, not a big surprise, I guess. Is all I can say about that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, how's CanTrust doing these days? I haven't looked at a chart. Two, 280, two, uh, you know, 280, uh, not looking Ooh. very, it, you know, it looks like it's going to sleep. I mean, I guess everybody's waiting for some kind of, but every time I think about what, what, what's transpired, it just looks to me that they're, uh, they've made some, 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 uh, some very serious mistakes. Yeah, well, some would say made mistakes, others would say committed some crimes. <laughs> but uh, you know that's uh, that's one of the problems with this history is that you still got cowboys in it. We're going to change it. We're going to push the envelope a little aggressively, and uh, this is the upshot. This is the outcome for investors. And the problem is, you look at Can Trust and all the things that they've been doing. I mean, we've gone and shot footage at their facilities three three times over the last couple of years, and then for all the scrutinizing we could do looked like it was a fully legitimate, promising company, one of the most promising ones out there. Right. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, like I, I, I remember when, when the market started getting hot, a lot of people said, this is the one company you got to own. Like, it, it, it's, it's really doing all the right things. And so, jeepers creepers. Yeah, everybody got caught their pants down on this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, probably some people, probably. Uh, anyway, I don't like to say too much because of all the all the lit litigious things that are going to happen here. You know. Well, you don't have to worry, Ed. None of the guys at uh, Cantrip are going to have enough money left to come try and sue us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I see someone walking behind you out towards the ocean. There, that looks like a beautiful, beautiful place. That's my niece. She's going. Uh, she's going boogie boarding. Wave, Johanna, wave! <laughs> yeah. That looks fun. Wow. You yeah. could grow some pot right there, couldn't you? Ah, <laughs> uh, well, uh, this is Oregon. There's three times as much pot growing here as the whole state can consume. So uh, it's oh, pretty, wow. pretty inexpensive here. I don't know if you'd really bother growing it, but there's so many great growers growing organic weed here. I mean, Oregon's one of the most agricultural states there are. Organic in Oregon, hmm? Yeah, yeah. And, you, and you know, James, they're going to make a decision on interest rates tomorrow, like in the yes, States. Yes, I'm looking forward to that, Ed. Yeah. What's your bet? Well, I think I got a funny feeling that because it's it's sort of, it's going to happen. There's going to be a cut, but I think it's already baked in. I think the mm. cut, the cut is, uh, you know, it may, it may maybe, you know, gold may firm a little bit, but I, but gold's had a good run. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, we were, yeah. Looking at some gold stocks earlier, like uh, Kirkland Lake and uh, Detour, and they've both they both performed very well. Yeah, still haven't seen much action in the junior golds though. You, you know what? And I'm not going to start looking at them until I start to see some volume. Like we got to start to see when, you know, the the volume, like the top ten list. Uh, what are the most active stocks? What are the the, the biggest percentage gainers? And yeah, I, I I haven't seen it either. I haven't seen it either. Yeah, I think uh, investors looking to get into a junior gold with lots of potential upside. Take a look at the video on the Lane Gold. It's a trading symbol is GG, but if you search on the Midas Letter website for Lane Gold, we did an incredible video on a gold miner that's going to produce $10 million worth of here. Probably more now with the rising price, whose share price has not really responded uh, to the gold price. 
So I'm looking at this thing thinking, what is wrong with this picture? I mean, if, there, if we were looking for a lot of leverage to gold price in a junior gold, lean gold certainly looks like one. But again... I'm not to be trusted. They're one of our sponsors. Well, you, you, you know, you know, the, I, I've made that mistake uh, several times over my career where I've got in early and not waited for the market to tell me it's, it looks easy. Like, you, you know, so, you know, for, for the, I mean, I think I'm really smart, but sometimes my actions would suggest the exact opposite. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, that's a self, too. self-deprecating. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> What, whatever. Uh, so, so, yeah. Some some of these are performing the a lot price? better. What about gold price? Fourteen twenty. Say it again. Gold price is holding in strong at fourteen twenty plus. Yeah, fourteen twenty five. I think it hit fourteen thirty. It might be fourteen twenty eight right now. Uh, yeah. It, you know, I think it's 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 looking like it's getting ready for another move. Then it, to my uh, the way I look at things. Yeah. That could be. It may have be, a washout, though. It may have a washout when they raise rates tomorrow, just to fool everybody, and then maybe that's when you'd get in. I, I, hard to say. Hard to say. We, we shall see. Uh, so, anyways, just before I go, let's take a look at some of these top moving cannabis stocks. On the, uh, for some reason today's the, the, the Midas Letter Canadian Venture Index is the only one that's actually moving, and uh, it's up. Point percent okay right uh the company that's leading the charge on that is petro biopharm up four right. cents to 27 cents and diva limited is the is up seven cents to 46 cents 48 north cannabis up 7.41 percent to 87 cents now 48 north we're going to go and be shooting their uh first outdoor harvest this month one Rather of our viewers was actually August. asking if Raising you're going to do that Oh, one of our viewers was asking if you're going to go to the 48 North Harvest. We are. Indeed we are. We're going to be there with cameras rolling. Wow. Oh. Yeah. It's going to be well, fun. That's good. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off now because the surf is calling my name and I've got whales to put a... Are you going surfing? <laughs> Everybody's going surfing. Surfing, surfing USA. USA. <laughs> I want to see James surf. <laughs> no, I'm not going surf. There's no surf. That surf's no good for surf. Oh, well, maybe you're going turfing. <laughs> no, I'm going to photograph whales with my drone. Wow. wow. Whales? Yeah, we've got gray whales that are hovering just offshore here. I've got some footage. I'll be putting that in the feed next week. Okay. Yeah, show us. For well, sure. we'll look forward to maybe talking to you tomorrow. Yes, we will talk tomorrow. I'll be back in the studio. I'll be back in my chair on Friday. Awesome. Great. <laughs> great. All right, Nika, great to see you. Great Good to, to see, see you. you. Thanks. Have fun. You know, this, this uh, 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 pretty good reception, mm -hmm. but it's it's still a little, I find it a little you. awkward. You know, you, 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 you may, there may be a bit of a delay and you, you talk when yeah. you, you should be listening. And I'm always talking. <laughs> That's okay. Our viewers get it, right? You guys get it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, we've been having a lot of fun on the show and I really am grateful to be here for sure. And if anybody wants to stay in touch with me, have any more talk about energy or psychology, you can find me on nikadomi.com. So I invite everybody to keep the conversation going and we'll chat more. And if you want to find me, just go to the Mercado Happy Hour. <laughs> we'll be there after today. Where I'm, I'm, uh, I'm showing that I'm, I'm an accountant that has some cost conscious, looking for uh, looking for love in all the wrong places. Anyway, well, uh, okay, well, we got we got some time here. Let's. I, there's a couple mm -hmm. charts I wanted to uh, I wanted to put up. Yes, really quickly. Uh, Which ones? Well, well, I, I, I know one. I got one right here. Uh, Mojave Jane, Mojave Jane used to be called High Hampton, and they're raising money right now. Just a second here, and they've changed. They've dropped the price of their their funding. Mm -hmm. Wow! Look at this. Let's okay, this, this is a very very powerful candle today. Um, I'm going to just change this a little bit so we get a. You see that? Oh wow! Look at that. You tail. see, you see how long it, it got down to fifteen cents. Mm -hmm. 
it's going to looks like it's going to close around 25 26 26 and a half that is as bullish as bullish a candle as you can as you can get when 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 something gets knocked down and apparently there was some big selling going on earlier uh, i think it's traded well over two million shares today uh, yeah, that 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 should that candle should hold up as a uh, bottom, as a as a at least a tradable, very tradable bottom. In fact, if you had a buy order in there at 16 cents and it was now 26 cents, you might say, "Well, I'll just take the 10 cents right off the top right now, mm -hmm. and you know I'll sleep. Uh, no, I won't worry about what's going to happen tomorrow." Hmm. But they're they're going to I think raising about eight million dollars. So that that candle would suggest that things are going reasonably well. In that in that in that financing effort. Do That's, you have time for one more? People are asking in our chat room about H H B O R Harbor. H what is Harbor it? Side, I'll sorry. do it quickly. Really quickly, they are talking about it. So uh, either that or we can do it tomorrow. H B O R. H B O R. Is that where is that trade? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I think. Well, CSC? if you don't know where, well, we get we gotta. I guessed right. Three thirty-five. Look at that candle. Holy smokes! We'll put that up. Again, we got mm -hmm. something's happened there today. Okay, that may, maybe that's a sign that there's been a lot of pessimism. There's, there's a, a negative tone. That's usually when things start to rise. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, and uh, Halo Labs. We got to remember Halo Labs. Yep. HaloCanna.com. HaloCanna.com. Right. <laughs> I can't wait to try the Shatterizer still. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe uh, maybe later tonight. <laughs> That'd be really cool. <laughs> so come back tomorrow, guys. We'll be here. We'll be chatting, and uh, yeah, we'll see what's what happens tomorrow with those rates. Yes. Okay. Good night. See you later. Bye. Mm -hmm.